Hey guys, um, long time to talk to you. I am going to try to do a video, actually I'm going to probably try to do a couple of videos. I'm sitting outside at the person's house where I've been staying for the past two months, I guess it's been. Um, and I've been trying to figure out how to do this because this is not the first time I've tried to upload a video. I've tried to do a video several times, at least three times. And each time I try to upload these videos, um, one of them I've tried to upload uh, several times. Um, that might have been the case with a few of them. Anyway, they wouldn't upload. They would upload about, I don't know, 75% or 70%. And then they, just trying to fix the lighting on here, and then they wouldn't upload. Um, so, I don't know. It just feels like it's been one attack after the other. So I've been trying to figure out how do I want to... Um, Sorry, just messing with the lighting because it's the lighting keeps changing because I'm outside. <laughs> I'm just about to say screw it and leave it. Um, hold on here a second, you guys. Jeez, that better. Sorry, I don't want to waste a bunch of time on the lighting. Anyway, um been trying to decide how to do it and I didn't really want to have like an hour long video or an hour and a half long video and I tried recording videos again last night I recorded a couple different videos and uploading them last night they wouldn't upload I'm trying to upload them today they wouldn't upload so it's been nothing but a hassle and a headache so I can forget it it's been to the point where I'm like I've been so overwhelmed with stress and anxiety and frustration and discouragement and depression that honestly to be honest with you it's been one attack and one battle after the other, and I'm just, on more than one occasion, on most days, feel like I'm just ready to say screw it and forget it and throw in the towel and be done with everything. Um, I mean, I could sit and lie and act like everything's hunky-dory and everything's awesome, but it's not awesome, and I'm not awesome. And um, so I've been trying to decide, you know, maybe to make, like, part one, part two, part three, and just do it in, like, 15, 20-minute segments at the most. So that it's not as hard for you guys to sit there and watch a whole video. You can do it a little bit easier that way. Um, and I guess my thought is the first video, this video, I think I'm going to make this about... Um, I guess I'll make this, this video about the ministry stuff. Um, the stuff that I had been doing ministry-wise since I left the hotel on April 9th. Um, but the first thing you should know is when I left that hotel, I ended up getting one of the guys who I worked with at the homeless ministry, um, he's a brother in Christ, he ended up having to pick me up because I was pretty much stranded there. And with me and my luggage and my cats, and you guys know I lost my car, and a lot more has happened since then. Um, I still continue to get I still continue to get threatened all the time with my storage garages auctioning off my stuff because I can't I haven't had the money to pay it. Um, my I can no longer get my smartphone to work. My BlackBerry won't work at all. Even re forgetting the bill needing to be paid. I mean, the BlackBerry itself, my phone itself won't come on. It has all my contacts in there. So I've been using like one of those free, prepaid phones, and they completely screw you over because what happens is you get minutes put on there, and you let's say you use 10 seconds out of a minute, they end up taking an entire minute of your airtime. So they screw you over that way. But then if you don't end up using all your minutes, because um, you're trying to conserve them to make sure you don't run out because you're paranoid because you're broke, and you know that they will take 10 seconds and call that a minute, so you try to be extra careful, then I think what happens is if you don't use all your minutes by a certain time, I think they take those from you too. So basically they're making a lot of money, and the minutes that they're quote unquote selling you, they're keeping most of those minutes. Um, and then more recently, in the last week, I found out that because of a lack of activity on my bank account, they closed my bank account. So literally, let me just kind of go back a little bit. When I left the hotel on April 9th, um, a friend, a guy from a, the homeless ministry ended up having to pick me up. and. I had my cats and my luggage, and 
he ended up introducing me. He was um, trying to help me find a place to go. We weren't sure. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I literally had no idea. And so he ended up asking this person that he was friends with, it's a sister in Christ, if I could, if she would open up a home to me. And she's done this before for other people. So she ended up saying yes. I went to her home on April 9th on that Wednesday, and I was there for right around two weeks, a little under two weeks. She did not have any kind of uh, wireless or any kind of internet connection. Um, so I wasn't able, sorry, there's people walking by, and I'm not trying to have everybody listen to my conversation. Um, so, anyways, um, sorry. So I wasn't able to get online or check internet or anything like that, and I certainly wasn't able to any, do any kind of videos or whatever. I wasn't even able to check prophecy or anything that was going on in the world. Um, excuse me, I'm tired. I'm stressed. So anyway, um, then I left her house. I, went, I ended up back at a hotel for three or four days, and then ended up back at her house for like a week and then since then I ended up at a friend's house that I've known for a long time um, but she's got her own stuff going on I mean she's had brain cancer twice she's had breast cancer five times so she's got her own life and her own thing and um, she has a little condo it's more like a, a two-bedroom apartment but it's she owns it so it's called a condo but um and I've been staying in the spare bedroom I've still been living out of my luggage since December 30th, 2012. Um, Ministry-wise, I, I, I guess I'll go into ministry a little bit. I, again, I'm, I'm feeling extremely stressed out, extremely a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration, a lot of depression, um, some resentment, some bitterness. Um, I'm just being honest with my emotions like I do I'm not gonna lie about it and act like everything's hunky-dory because it's not hunky-dory and there's been some people that have emailed me that you know are a little more familiar with kind of what I'm talking about um, but so I've been in her spare bedroom and the day that I left the hotel um, you know that we had three cats my son and I had three cats and they ended up having to go with the friend that picked me up from the homeless ministry to take me to that lady's house. And they were with him for a couple of months, but then he needed to get rid of them because he lives with a bunch of roommates and they needed, they wanted the cats gone. And they weren't his cats and, you know, he was just doing that as a favor and I understood that. And um, the thing is, is the place where I'm staying, she's got a male cat who's territorial who also did not want my cats here. So I guess what I'm saying is when I made that Red Sea video, I even said in that video, because I've rewatched little bits and pieces of it, and I said in that video, like, the last thing I want to think about is tomorrow. This was me on April 8th making that video saying, I hope that tomorrow nothing else bad happens. And then the very next day is when I had to leave the hotel and when I got separated from my cats. So, you know, just when I always think it would be enough, just when I think that losing my home twice would be enough and then going to court for my faith over my child would be enough, and then um, losing my, you know, being evicted again and being living out of a hotel and living out of suitcases for seven months would be enough pain, suffering, and, you know, testing in my faith. And just when I think that, um, you know, after all the court battle that I went through with my ex for, with my son or whatever, um, over all of the preaching that I had been doing about the end times, over all my Facebook posts, all of my YouTube posts, all that stuff went through the court system warning about the Lord's return and um, all the different things that we believe are coming and you know just, it's always like just when I think that you know surely there's not going to be something else that I'm gonna have to go through more suffering more pain more heartache more loss and sure enough there always is um, and it was that next day that when I like I said I went to that lady's house and then he ended up taking my cat so at that point I became then separated and parted from my cats well, if you have animals, if you have dogs, if you have cats, you know what I'm talking about. They become like your kids. They become a part of your family. They were not only my animals, but they were my son's animals. And they brought both, you know, they brought him comfort. They brought me comfort. Um, 
especially going through as many trials and tribulations as I've been going through for my faith. And be it whether it's for my faith, whether it's for testing, whether it's for discipline, whether it's for chastising, whether it's for training, you know, there's all kinds of things that it's got to do with for anybody that's going through trials and tribulations. I mean, the Lord said in the last days, especially that those that were wise and that understood what was going on, you know, that we would be put through the fire. And um, I've definitely been put through the fire, I feel like, but I, I feel like I should already be out of the fire frustration I deal with is I continue to get hope after hope after hope after hope after hope and sign after sign after sign after sign after sign of deliverance um, and yet I continue to not be delivered yet now granted staying at the friend's house where I am um, it absolutely does beat you know having the hotel knocking on my door every day looking for payment but at the same time the bottom line is this when I came here, the agreement was, and when I say agreement, this is what we had talked, this is what she told me was permissible, and this is, I didn't know what I was going to do after that either, was that, you know, a few days, you know, and here it's been like a couple of months, two, two and a half months. I mean, at the end of the day, and this is true for anybody, you know, nobody really wants somebody else in their home all the time, and nobody really wants to be in somebody else's home all the time, okay? I feel very extremely isolated, extremely trapped. Um, you guys know that I lost my car. Where the friend is living, where her condo is, is very close to where my apartment was, where I got evicted from at the end of December. So my son is only just a few minutes down the road via a car, like if you're driving. Well, I, she's got a bike, and I have been taking the bike on all these bike trails and trying to find different paths that would lead to the town where my son is so that I could maybe even go see him on the bike. That's not going to happen because um, every time I take all the different bike trails, they end up going way, like, tons of miles out of the way, a totally different direction. So, um, that's, I did get to see him last week, um, his dad, you know, picked me up or whatever, and um, I met them down here in the corner and picked me up and took me and my son to go get something to eat or whatever, but um, literally since March 13th, since I got my car repossessed, I've only gotten to see him less than a handful of times, and when I saw him on Mother's Day, this has never happened before, when I saw him on Mother's Day, he was a little bit taller than I was. And that had never happened, and that totally broke my heart, completely it about killed me, it devastated me. For me to give him a hug and have to look up to him a little bit, and he's only just, but you know, 14 years old. I mean, we're talking about going from a situation where he was my entire life, he was my baby, he's still my baby, okay? He's always going to be my baby and my heartbeat, okay? This is the love of my life. Outside of God, he's the love of my life. You know, it's like the Lord, my child our animals and like other than that I feel like I've been stoned to death emotionally speaking by so many people for so long at this point I just feel very alone um <clears throat> so you know we saw him last week or whatever and he had grown even taller and we just talked a little bit ago and we're talking about on the phone we're talking about trying to he's supposed to be going to some Christian camp for church for his grandparents church um next week so um i'm was hoping and trying to see him again this week normally even though with the court battle and the custody battle and everything that i had to go through with my preaching about the end times and all that stuff um we did you know eventually back in late 2012 i think it was you know we did come to the um I guess you could say agreement they I don't really want to get into the details of that but the point is is I don't have him nearly like I used to okay and I had to put the Beatitudes into practice in that courtroom um, you know when your neighbor does when your enemy does this you turn the other cheek when you, the enemy does this you do that you know I had to really um, the Bible talks about like if you have to go before the judge or whatever not to worry about what you're gonna say the Holy Spirit will give you the words but anyway, I'm digressing right now. I really don't even want to get into that because I'm not even in the mood to talk about that anyways. This is just more like me talking about 
the the reality that I'm I I'm already on 14 minutes and I also just realized that I didn't do the um, I did the widescreen instead of this instead of the standard which means it'll take a little bit longer to upload I'm probably gonna go ahead and um, in this video now I'll just make this part one and um, you guys can come back for part two that way it's not like an hour hour and a half long video I'd rather just make a few different videos so I'll see you in the next video